Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play! Today I'm here with Owen from Game with the Cooler, and we're taking a look at Riot Quest, the latest um, kitchen table scale uh, hero style beat em up set in the War Machine universe from Privateer Press. Now, this is a two to four player, um, sort of like MOBA style, draft a bunch of heroes, go in, get the loot, beat the guys up, score points, and win. Uh, sort of hex based tabletop adventure game. Um, it's super open ended by any models you like. There are some drafting mechanics or organized play systems you might want to conform to, but in the basic core game, it's take any 10 heroes you like, um, you get to spawn at least four of them uh, during any given game round, and you fight until one person person scores seven victory points. You can do that through scrapping other players, means killing people, um, securing different bounties, which are your objectives, uh, and through a variety of other sort of like in-game random effects and stuff like falls from the sky. There's treasure chests you can crack open. There's sort of like random orbs and stuff that fall. You might have to find a war jack cortex and like scrap it or loot it or whatever. Um, and a lot of your favorite characters from War Machine exist here. So Iris, um, and Boomhauer, for instance, and Gorman are also like in this first uh, wave and starter set of miniatures. And it's because basically th this game presupposes that what's happening in the War Machine universe right now actually takes place. And the, the Infernals take two thirds of souls and we're left with like a hollow post-apocalyptic wasteland where people are just like, well, there's no kingdoms left. There's no heroes. There's no gods. I Let's mean, all just fight for stuff. They just take two thirds of human souls. I think it's everybody. Yeah, but I think the war like kills everybody though. Because I mean, like there's like almost well we don't know. We there's not there's not that much meat on the bone, man. Who knows? <laughs> you just end up with scorned dwarves and then trolls. And dwarves all living their lives. It's a it's MacGuffin! Like, look, all the humans. It are doesn't. He does. We're not being persecuted anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> the assumption is that it gets Thanos and everything just gets better. Yeah, you got rid of most <laughs> of the humans. They were the problem. Now the trolls are living great. Oh, Thanoan. <laughs> <laughs> Always got a Thano and all the people. Uh, I but say humans would be better. <laughs> Just pe people have Tables died. have turned. Tables have turned. That's right. Yeah, stupid humans. So anyway, we'll show you the table. We'll walk you through the basic mechanics of the game. It's pretty simple. I'm um, using a lot of the same strike and dice systems from Monster Apocalypse, and we'll get this underway. All right, so here is the Riot Quest single player chart pack. Um, it comes with a team ready to rock and roll of five models. You get Des the Bazooka Lady, Eris the Mage Hunter, who's now like a... Bounty Hunters, you get Gubbin the Slightly Insane Goblin, you get Bamfist from Zoo, he's from a totally different uh, continent in the Iron Kingdoms, and you get Sir Dreyfus, who is n totally unrelated to Signar, because uh, he's just a big goon that always wanted to be a Storm Knight, that steals some armor and cobbles it together and pretends he's the last Storm Knight, even though he's just like a total chode. Uh, so here's my stars that they're all metal, um, with appropriate size bases that I've all painted up, so there's Dez, there's Sir Dreyfus, and his storm armor. There's Eris, mage, I guess, bounty huntress now. And then Bamfist, with his crazy like She's zoo armor and stuff. Fortune hunter of Fortune idols. hunter of that's right. Uh, and then Gubbins, the insane pyrotechnic exploding goblin. He has now, a title. He does not have a title now. <laughs> now I also have some of the wave one and two models here. I have all the wave one models, um, which include James, who is like a construct from, what's that faction called? The Convergence of Cirrus, I believe. You've got Widget, who's a crazy flying mechanic. You have Gorman the Mad, which is whatever happens to Gorman the Wolf when he snorts too much Gorman powder. Uh, you've got... <laughs> Uh, what's this guy's Harlem name? Har Hold em high. Harlem Hold'em High, who's like a Rulik gun mage captain. Uh, and then you got Boom Harler, not Co, solo artist with his giant chain gun and very small great axe. It's called a great axe, but it's it's little more than a hatchet. And then I believe from wave two, this is Black Bella. Um, and I got this pre-release, which was very nice to private to your press. Now all of these have a class. Uh, when you build a team, when you're playing open play, you just build a team of up to 10 models, uh, 5 to 10, that you can spawn your um, your Riot crew from, your team. Uh, but they all have a different class. So Bella is a fighter, then you have a engineer, you have a gunner, you have a um, bodyguard, I believe. Is it on here? Class, there we go, sorry. Uh, fighter, gunner, rogue, this is going to be the yellow ones there with the stabbers. Scouts with the eyeballs, guards is the name for these guys, and then specialist is these ones over here. Yep. Rogue Those, scout. Rogue scout, yes. Um, now there is like a format for organized play where you pick one of each, so you get basically one of each hero type to play. And there are some benefits when you're like opening treasure boxes and stuff based on what your class is and even for scoring objectives. So having the right person for the right job can save you action dice and improve your action economy. So when we play today, what we're going to do um, is we're gonna draft. <laughs> no, 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 we're gonna draft. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick, we're gonna put um, Black Bell out of this, we're gonna flip these over, 
just want a potato chip. You just want a potato chip? You're not getting a potato chip. Throw them in. No, <laughs> just throw it and deal it five. So we're gonna do five, uh, and we're each gonna draft one from each pile, basically. So you go ahead and go first. Draft away and take the ones you want, and I'll take the remaining five. And just to get us started, because we're each playing from one deck here, and this way everyone can be unique, we'll do our cruise. So, uh, I got Bamfist, Gore, sorry, Harlow, James, Gorman, and Boomhauer. Now, in a normal game, what you would do uh, is you would roll off to see who's going to pick the map, the bounty, and the treasures. Um, because there's only one available right now, we're clearly using the Thunderhead Fortress mat. Now, this is the neoprene version. There is a paper version that comes in here, but it does not look as good, good on camera, so I'm using the separately sold neoprene one. Um, and then the starter set treasure and bounty decks are the only ones available right now. So don't worry about the choice. The choice is basically made for you. Um, and now that we've drafted our characters, we will shuffle out some ride gear. Now normally you get to deal, you want to sh shuffle those and deal out five to each of us. You will get a piece of ride gear equal to the number of heroes that you have in your crew. Typically four will be on the table at any given time. You would get to choose any pieces of ride gear up to the number that are um, available in the game but we're just gonna deal them out because it's just faster and easier for you guys to see it this way. Now, Riot Gear is all things that you can purchase in-game as power-ups. So I've got, for instance, a Dematerializer, a Galvanic Repulsor, some Hyperspring Super Mario boots, but like John Leguizamo Super Mario boots, and the Echo Displacer, which gives me some like cloaking abilities. These stay in a hand until the person they're attached to um, dies, in which case they get scrapped and thrown away, um, or I bring someone back onto the bench, in which case this will actually go back in my hand. But they are one use until somebody dies, so you have to be careful who you stick them onto. Now you gotta spend the doll redos on here to attach them, you can attack them anytime during one of your actions, and you'll typically earn them by getting treasures, um, which or by getting frags, which will put down treasure onto the table. The game is played first to seven. Uh, we have scrap cards over here, we'll draw one of these each every time we kill somebody, and then we have our bounties and treasures that we'll deal it during the game. But Right now we're gonna set up, which means we will each roll all six of our action dice. And look for the most strikes. I got two, Five. you got more than two. So you get to roll the D6 first, and the game does come with basically one set of these. You get a D6, you get six of these, four of these, and four, four of these. These are basically a four plus with one super strike. These are a three plus with one super strike, and these are a two plus with, I think, two super strikes? Yeah, it looks like one. No, it's always one. It's always one super strike, which is a double hit. So you gotta roll D6. Uh, yeah. How do I determine which one's not on the board? Wait, however you want to do it. You just start to play until you have up to four. All right. Who wants to go first? Six. Dez. Dez is going first. Okay, so you place her any square adjacent to one of these. Now, these are teleporters. Basically, they are spawn points. And any adjacent square is eligible to spawn them into. We can end up spawning right next to each other. I'm going to do Bamfest. He's going to show up on two. So he's going to show up over here. Back to you. Sir Dreyfus. Sir Dreyfus, also on two. Uh-oh, we're having a fight. What's up? <laughs> we're here, James. James lands on four. So we go over here. Gubbin. The Gubbin. Two. What up? Oh, man, I'm surrounded. Sir Dreyfus. On three, we're going to have Gorman, uh, which pops him over here. And then last but not least is Boomy. I'm oh, sorry. Widget. On one. And then Boomy is going to show up on two. So he'll be over here. Ah, it's not terrible, I guess. It's going to be in reserve. Now, anytime you start a turn with less than four guys on the pitch, you'll spawn one onto a random spawn point. Um, and now before we get started in the first activation, we will spawn a treasure and a bounty. So uh, we're going to roll off to see who goes first. The first treasure is going to fall and the first bounty is going to go out. So the first treasure is the hidden chest. Uh, it goes on a D6 on a, one of these treasure spots. You have both of them. Oh, I somehow do. Sorry. To two. It's over there. Convenient for you. So now treasure can be interacted with a rig action and during every activation you can do each of these five actions once. So you can run, which is move your speed, attack, make one of the attacks on your card, raid, which would be go into a chest, rig, which is interact with something, usually an objective or another model, or a special action from your card, which would be defined. So the hidden chest, if you rig it, a scout, something with a yellow card, can raid this without spending an action dice. It's a free action. You gain four loot tokens if you roll a uh, a blank on a blue dice, you get three loot tokens and a model in your a crew can immediately move two spaces if you roll a one. On a super strike, you gain four loot tokens and you can immediately place a model in your crew in play adjacent to a spawn gate. It's not considered spawning, so you get a fifth model on the board if one's available. So super cool hidden chest. 
Um, and when you do a rig action to try and interact with your rate action, you roll three power dice plus your action die that you spend to do it, if you spend to do it. And as long as you get a three plus in successes, you'll successfully open it up. Got two bounties. So the first one's gonna be, look a death trap. Put a trap token in the middle of the table. So you wanna grab the one that's a little trap and put it over here. Uh, any hero is in the same space as you get pushed into it, you're dead. <laughs> a hero adjacent to it can disarm it if successful. The hero's controlling player claims this bounty, and fighters and scout heroes get an additional action die when they try and rig it to, to take it off. You get two VPs if you successfully do. So if we push something, we have a lot of push effects in this game, um, into that space, they are auto-killed. And let's get started. We'll do our first activation, and uh, that's when we'll show you the anatomy of the card. So we're gonna roll six action dice each and look for strikes to see who goes first, and the game just goes from there. Four. Five. So I have first activation, which is handy because I can show you the anatomy of a card. So I'm going to use Boom Howler, and Boom Howler is going to try and murder some dudes. So uh, Boom Howler has a speed of four, so if I take the run action, I can move four squares. His defense is three, five. So when someone attacks him, if they roll three successes, they do one point of damage. If they roll five or more, they do two. He can take four damage with his stamina before he dies. He has the aim skill. He can reroll any number of action dice when he makes a range attack, try and get better hits. He's a fell caller. Other models in your crew within two gain plus one boost dice in their attacks because he's like encouraging them. And rapid fire, he can take the attack action twice during his activation. Um, and then he's also got a chain gun and a great axe. He has a melee attack with one square range that does, uh, in addition to his action dice, a three power dice boost and a chain gun with a three square range that's two and one. So what we're gonna do is we are going to fill our dice well with six dice. Uh, and I'm gonna use the back of Black Ball's card as my dice well, because the game only comes with one. And I'm gonna put an action die on a, a Boom Howler to try and shoot Gub Gubbins there. He is within three. Now I believe that's a blocked hex, so I have to actually move to see him first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move and go, I move four squares. So I'm gonna move one, two to here. And I'm gonna spend my next action dice to shoot. So I get two blue and a red when I make a shoot action. Now what's the defense value on old Gubbins there? So he's five, six. Holy moly. Uh, but he is also adjacent to Dreyfus, which means he gains cover. He gains cover automatically, so he becomes six, seven. So it's significantly harder to hit this guy. So what I'm gonna do, he only, he only take two damage before he dies, but if I roll six hits, I'll kill him. I'm actually gonna put two more action dice into this attack to try and hit him. So if I do a six, I'll do a point of damage. Yeah, seven. If I get a seven, I'll actually kill you. Now I have aim, so I can reroll these. So I'm at five right now. So if I get a super strike, I'll kill you. And if I get two strikes, I'll also kill you. I got a super strike. So there's seven, so that's two damage. I get to grab a scrap card, which is a VP. I get to place a dollar due in his square, that's right. And then if I want, I could take a second range attack action, but I'm just gonna sit still and stop. It does put me at four of my six action dice out, which means I may hit a cooldown very soon and have to skip a turn basically while everybody powers down. So then, now that I'm done activating, it goes over to you. You have less than four on the table, so somebody can spawn on a random place. It could be Eris, because he's in the cooler. On a three, it's over here. Anywhere adjacent, and you start your activation. She's gonna go. She's gonna do a walk. One, two, she flies. Yep. Three, four. Yep, so as long as she doesn't end in a block square, she can ignore it. And then she is going to investigate that one. Now, she's an engineer, so when trying to succeed in this quest... She has to reroll any of her failed... Boost dice. Boost dice, so the blue ones, ones. yep. So looking for three successes, rerolling the blues. Sweet. I got my three. But you can still reroll that and try and get more if you needed to. You don't really need to. Yeah, you got, got five, five then. Yep. So roll a blue die and see what your result is. Hidden chest. Just four, four loots. loots. So four dollars, four monies. Right. Here. Now you can use a rag here because you can equip those at any time. Yeah. So we're gonna equip the shard of wrath rock. Um, it'll gain plus one red power die on melee attacks and also gains the fight or charge ability and the fighter class. So if, if you move, yes, yeah, so you become a fighter and if you move before you make an attack action, you, you get, get an like additional, additional boost. So <laughs> plus two red basically if you move an attack with a melee. And a charge bonus. And we're gonna put it on Widget. And because Widget That's is a hilarious. tinkerer, <laughs> it only costs two instead of four. That's hilarious. She becomes actually really good at melee. So she's now a three five and she's both classes. Oh my God. <laughs> we'll start my action now. Uh, we spawn a treasure, that one's gone. So a new treasure shows up. So we get the spiked chest. And that's good on oranges, and where does it show up? Uh, you roll, because it's your turn. And it is. On one, so treasure one. Well, that's convenient. Super convenient, because you get a free raid on that one, too, which is awesome. Uh, but I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to go with James. And James is going to take a walk for one. And she's going to go four when she walks, and go one, two, three, four. We're just going to be done. Yeah, it's back to you. All right. 
Well, I think we're gonna go and take that free chest. So we're gonna activate Dez. Yep. She's gonna go one, two, three. And then she could check it for free, but we are gonna throw in an extra die. Uh, sorry, actually, before I do that, because at the beginning of my activation, I can buy items as well, right? Yeah, in time it's your activation, it's not interrupting an attack. <clears throat> Spend two to buy the loot duplicator and give it to Dez. So when I do a raided treasure chest, I roll two boost die afterwards to choose my result. Got it. So spend the money, throw in some dice, search boxes, try and get some some success. Got some success. And then two pick the highest or pick the better? Two what I want. Yeah, we'll yep, probably take chest. the crit. Uh, three loot tokens and immediately return one spent action die on a model in your crew to the well. So we're going to take... So she would now have two three. more on her. Yep. Uh... I don't know, it's not super relevant. If I had someone who only had one, I would take it off yeah. of them. So, so you'd activate, activate them again? again? But I don't. Anything else? Uh, she's not in range to shoot. That's it for her. All right, so start of my turn now. We deal with the treasure out. The ticking chest arrives on square four, which will be right there. Guards are good at grabbing that one, and you get, when you raid it, four loot, four loot, and you can immediately remove all damage from all of your crew, and four loot, remove damage, so immediately place a model in your crew and play Jason to a spawn game. We got one action die left. We're just gonna go with Bamfist, I think, and he's gonna take a swing at uh, you. Sorry, he's just gonna empower. Um, he's gonna use this action when this model performs his action. Choose another model in your crew within two spaces and return two action dice from them into the well. So we'll take two off Boomhauer and put them back in the well. Back to you. All right, Dreyfus is gonna activate. Uh, we're gonna spend one because normally it would be three, but Widget makes it cheaper to equip items. We're going to put the bang rounds on Dreyfus, because it's reduced cost by two to a minimum of one, and then he is going to, let's say, shoot you or stab you. His stab is much better. Yeah. His stab is four, four boost, and, sorry, four boost and a power, or a thing, big red one now. Right, you put that on Widget, didn't you? <laughs> Yes, no, Widget, I, Widget I, I, has I, the I, super Widget. hammer, that's right. Actually, you know what, we'll just keep our money for now. You're not going to buy that? Until we need it. Okay. Yeah, so we'll still activate him though, and he'll uh, he'll just bash you with his uh, storm lance upgraded. That makes sense. Just hit you. Big punches. Do I want that money? Not really. Five. Five on two, bam fist. And minus one to your defense right now. So you do a super strike, which is two damage. Two of these little buttons. He's got one left. We're gonna go with Gorman. He's gonna spend one to walk or run rather, and he runs five. He's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And he's going to spend one to interact with the trap. Uh, he gets an additional action time when he does this because he's a scout. And if no, he rigs he's it... He's in a... Oh, he's a green. Never mind, sir. He doesn't get the additional one. Yeah, he's just going to get one. And he's going to try and rig it with three. Let's see if we can. That's right, because the scout is... Yellow. Yellow. It's uh, the guy didn't spawn. But we get two, which means we don't succeed. Die. And he failed, so it's a clear turn for me now. But it's a clear. Clear. Govan, come back. Had a boy. Oh, I'm sorry, we didn't do another bounty, did we? Because you succeeded in one? No. There should be two out. The other ones get paid. If a hero cover the riot gear raids a treasure chest, they claim this bounty. So I think you raided a treasure chest yes, with Dez to get that bounty. Sweet. So let's do another one during mine. Uh, get lucky if a hero rolls two or more super strikes in any roll during their activation, you get to claim this one. It actually would have been out when you attacked, so you're going to get that one as well. And the next one, freaking imposters if a hero knocks out an enemy with the same class. Score is currently two to my one, and it's my clear turn. So these are gonna go away. I have nobody knocked out. Uh, Gubbins is knocked out. Did you roll to see if he came yeah, back? Yeah, that was the. You got a double right there. And that's what he came back for. Perfect. So when you're when you have guys in the cooler, when you have a a, a cool down turn, you roll an action die, and the number of successes you get, the guys that go back on the bench. So over to you. Widget smash. Widget's gonna go one, two, three. Because she ignores these hexes. These hexes cost two to move into because they're cover, but she ignores it because she flies. And then she is going to just bash you. Bash me for one. You won't kill me. So she gets three blue, two reds, and white because she's made out of killing with her She wrench. is now, yeah. She's got a super wrench. Shablam. Four. Uh, that's four. That'll do it. Goes to five, essentially, because yep. you're minus one defense. Uh, and so that drops a loot. One dollar there. That's right, and you grab a scrap, and, and that scrap. puts you at three. We're gonna go with Gorman. He's just gonna try and raid this thing, because I really want to get it. He's gonna spend three action dice. Oh, sorry, I have less than four on the table, so I first spawn. Harlow shows up, and he's gonna show up on three. So right there. And then uh, we're gonna try, and yeah, we're gonna put three down. 
Har Harlow could go. He could go there, actually. And go one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's, how about, is it gonna end up costing the same? Because I'm gonna wanna put extra dice in that. So remember, three out of Gorman. Get our three, yeah. successfully disarm that. We get four total, and that means we can grab a look as a death trap for two. You don't draw anyone until the start of your turn, though, and then he's gonna move and go. Some action dice mm, four on him. Yep, action dice four. He's gonna go run and go. Ah, you know what? We're not gonna bother running. No, we're not gonna bother running. Before your turn, new bounty comes out, and it's gonna be. Telepandemonium, tele set up a random malfunction token on a spawn gate. If you hear it would spawn there, uh, they spawn adjacent to a random treasure beacon instead. I hear adjacent to a mal malfunctioning spawn gate can fix it. If successful, then they claim that bounty. So we'll roll random spawn gate. You get to roll, because it's your activation. You roll a two, so it's going to spawn over there. If anybody spawns on two, then they go to a random thing uh, otherwise. Is he going to go? Yeah, and he is going to do a move, because he wants to just scoop this money. Yep, one, two, three. And then he is going to, let's say, bap you with his knife. Makes sense. For one, so it'd be four and a white dice into Boom Howler. Getting two goes to three because it is minus one to your defense. Center for one. He cool. goes from three, five to two, four. And then his remaining two points, he's gonna just try and fix this teleporter. Do a ring. One, two, three. Clear that and gain two. And we draw a new objective at the start of the turn. Wreck face. If a hero raids a treasure chest and causes super damage in the same turn, they get two claim out. Well, we're gonna go with Harlow. Uh, we're gonna go, I guess. Move one. Mm, yeah, I'm tempted to shoot two people. I don't think I can kill her, cause she's terrifying. Although I ignore her cover right now, cause I'm a spotter. But we're gonna spend one die to move. And go one, two, and stand here. And then we're gonna spend a die to shoot. Actually, two dice to shoot. No, it's two different. One die roll and compare the results to everybody. So ambidextrous, I make one die roll and compare it to everybody. So what I'm gonna do two action dice and my three boost dice from my gun. Yep. And try and shoot Eris and uh, widget. widget. So her defense is five, six, I believe. Four, five. Uh, four, five, so actually three, four right now because of spotter. And hers is two, five. Two, five, but I have spotter. Uh, and, one four. and I ignore cover. That's right. Yeah, so it's one four. So let's see what we got here. We got uh, four. four total. So two and two. Two and two each. They each take super damage. I will be on to a uh, cooldown next turn. Cool down right now. Bam. Back to me. I get to cooldown as well. Back to me. Back to you. Can I have more than one piece of equipment? On nope. It? Only a, only a single one. But you can replace one with one with widget. Try yep. to die. Give Widget one. She's gonna move her five. Gorman shoots three, three, four, five. I can't get away from you. Mm, probably not. Three, four, five. He only shoots three? He shoots three as well, yeah. Can you, sh you won't be able to move closer to me. One, two, three, four. You won't be able to see me. We're gonna go with James, I think. And she's gonna walk and go one, two. And then she's gonna make stabs. Your defense is four five. Four five. So I need to get a four to kill you. Yep. And I am gonna put an extra die in this to make sure I do. Cool. And get four. And that should kill. So she drops a scrap, and I gain. Or sorry, she drops a doll redo, and I gain a scrap. And it is back to you. Come back, Govins. On a six, Govins arrives. Oh. Does gonna go? Uh, we're gonna spend one. We're actually gonna spend the money and replace our uh, loot duplicator with the bang rounds Because we've gotten our loot. We don't care anymore. That's fair And then we're gonna go on a walkabout Go one two three four because I have to be within two to shoot Gorman because it's cloak then I'm gonna shoot Gorman And I'm gonna get three blues and two reds plus my white He is defense three five I'm gonna get five. Takes two, got one left. I push back. There you go. Makes sense. Boom, he's gonna go. He's gonna spend one to shoot Sir Dreyfus. Action dice, two blues and a red for his chain gun. And he will hit you on a three. He can reroll his action die though. Nope, misses. Gonna spend another action die to do it again. On a three, I was really hoping to do two damage here. Nothing. <laughs> reroll my action die. 
Nope, still nothing. Great booming, that was fantastic. No, <laughs> yeah, one action die left, yeah, back to you. Gripe is gonna go. I kinda just wanna end my turn, so I'm actually just gonna all in, just bash you. With three dice? Yep. Three and four blues. Hit a five, you do double damage. Four. You one do damage. one, all right, he's got two left. Oh, minus one to your defense. So, four. We got one left on him. All right, well, I got one action, so we're just gonna move Mr. Harlow and go one, two, three, four. Me. Yeah, your turn ends. Uh, there's nothing to flip out, and then my turn ends. You're also clearing. Yep. Uh, does Bamfist come back? Oh, does. does Iris come back? No. Nope. Nope. You. Oh, yeah. Is she gonna go? Yep. I don't think we can escape anymore. So now we kill. And she's gonna go one, two, and then just hit you with her stick. Her murder gun. Her murder. Her murder, murder wrench. wrench. Her her Gordon Freeman. <laughs> go for it. Defense, 2-5 on Harlow. So 1-4 because you're near Sir Dreyfus. Four damage, shabam, double damage to you. You get flanks, you do double damage. He's down to one. All right, uh, well, we're gonna go before we die. As you do. And we're gonna take a walk with uh, Harlow. And go one, two. And then we're gonna super gun you. Use, so you're spotted right now, and you don't get cover, which means your defense is on her. One, four. One, four, and on him. Two five. Two five. All right. Well, we'll try and hit the five. We're gonna use two action dice. Uh, and we've already used one to move. Yeah. And then we're gonna get our three boost dice. Big numbers, no whammy. So there's three. Four. Four. Yep. Four total. So four is a killing blow against Widget. She only had yep. one health left. That's anyway. right. So I get a scrap. She'll lose that. Takes me to five. And a fun buck is placed. Can I think it's super damage on him? Yep. Two damage to Dreyfus. He's done, yeah, back to you. Well, Dreyfus is up. I guess we have to kill the Boom Howler. Yeah, try. So he's gonna attack. We're gonna give him two dice, and then he'll just have his four dice. Hmm. You know what we're also gonna do? We're gonna pay two and put the Dire Ale on Dreyfus. Okay. At the beginning of his activation. Try and heal him. Two red dice. Didn't roll double blanks. But heal kill one. Yeah, he's gonna bash me. Yeah, because now it takes super damage to kill you. Yep, hitting him. We did it. Okay, so Boomhauer's down. You gain another scrap. You go to six. Mm. A fun buck right there. That's back to me. Move. Yep. And I don't think I will. Okay, so you're at six. Yep. All right. Well, we're gonna go with I guess Gorman. He's gonna spend one to walk. And go one, two, three, four, five. And then he's gonna spend all the remaining dice to shoot you with his alchemical gun. And he needs a super strike to kill you. You're spotted, so you're two four right now. Sorry, two five. Yeah. If I get five, I'm gonna kill you. There's seven. seven. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you die, and then you're gonna drop a fun buck. And I strip you automatically of any, you discard it because you died anyway. See you, I go to six as well. Two dice, Dez. Kill somebody and we die, and you win. Last dice, we shoot Gorman in the back with our double red. You too. Three red, lots of red, slam. Five, four. Five, kills him. Four, four does it. And he, no one more scrap and you go to seven. Seven, six at the end of the game. Now normally you would play this best of three. So you won the first round. We're not gonna do best of three today. Um, but you would play it three times. Uh, there's also like a knockout format, but I think three times with a game this quick is probably the way to try and figure out if, if it's dice or if it's whatever, random spawnings. Uh, it kind of evens out the play at that point. Um, and yeah, the first person to get two two games out of the three will win the overall match in organized play. So there it is, our first look at Riot Quest. Guys, let me go into the game. I went taking it home with, uh, what was it you killed me with? Daz? She yeah. bazooked Gorman from like, him in the back, back of the head <laughs> after he killed Sir Dreyfus. Uh, so yeah, it's a quick, fun, kitchen table size game. Um, big three things I think I like the most about it. You can buy any miniature you like and play with it. It's open-ended. Uh, as long as you don't play in one of the formats where you want to each specialist, I think that's fantastic. You can just buy the models you like and play with them. Um, it's easy to play out of the box, so. If you get the one player star set, or if you just go and grab them individually, you're pretty much ready to rock and roll. And if you have a bunch of assets already from Monster Apocalypse, like the dice and stuff, you're pretty much able to play with just buying blisters. 
Like, because you need the rules, but I'm pretty sure the rules will be available okay. online. And a map. But you can buy the maps separately, too. So if you're not into the characters that are in the starter set, you can obviously pick up this stuff individually and just rock and roll. So it's really easy to pick up and play. You carry 10 models in a carrying case. You're basically ready to play this game at any time. Um, the mat also folds up really well, like sandwich style. So you want to put it in a messenger bag or whatever. It'll pretty much go anywhere. And the rest of the accessories, I put it all in a um, plastic tote, like you saw, which is fixed in the original box. So super portable, really fast to play. I think it's going to be a fun... Um, organized play game too because hopefully when more waves of stuff come out it just adds more layers of complexity and you can do two or three models a month and add something for everybody because everyone has access to them on the roster and it's not like your faction locked where it's going to make things not um available basically across hand they're really fun to paint they're super chunky they got tons of character i actually blew through all 11 of those miniatures in two days like i was i i had so much fun painting them i couldn't stop painting them even after i had like the eight we needed to play i was like i'm just gonna finish them all and get them done and i'm looking forward to the next ones i think wave two has a crocodile captain with an anchor on a, <laughs> on a chain there's a werewolf sniper and what was the third one there's werewolf sniper crocodile captain I should, oh it's a butcher five or whatever it's like big sure, shirtless yeah. butcher it's Big Charles Butcher, he's gone crazy. He's carrying Lola through the post-apocalypse. Shirt. He's always wearing his big steam belly. He's got his like big uh, steam. He's always got a like, big fur, big fur, yeah, fur cloak and like yeah. a steam belly. But he's just all like shirtless and enraged. So there's an actual like warcaster in this, which is interesting because you have to think about like his power level when he's a warcaster. He lost his magic ability. Uh, he must have. Yeah, they must have like sucked all the magic out of the world because like, well, there's got to still be magic. I don't know. I don't know it's what not something's magic. something's I guess, something's happened Once to again, him. He he's it's a human thing. Well, if you just think of him in War Machine terms, he would kill everyone in the arena in like two seconds, in like war in War Machine terms, basically. In one round. Yeah. <laughs> in one round, like he would just murder. Everyone like if it was Boomhauer, Eris, whatever, he would just <laughs> flashing blade them all and they'd all die. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see if more let's plays in the future. Big thanks for watching. Big thanks for Owen uh, helping me out doing this one. Until next time, Ash. Have more gaming. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.